Hey guys, I'm back again with episode 31 of Jake's Metal Chat. I know, already getting into the 30s of all these videos. Just had a shower, so that's why my hair looks a bit fucking weird. Uh, it's in my uh, skeletal, uh, skeletal, skeletal remains. God, I couldn't even bloody say it. Uh, skeletal remains. Uh, my guest is here. Sorry, just had a late night. I was uploading my last chat to my channel. Um, I got a nano legend to be. Uh, I got another legend to chat to this afternoon, as he lives in the Czech Republic, but he's originally from America. And I'm gonna bring him in now. Sorry, let me just. Ah, oh, man. Uh, uh, fucking long haired man troubles. And, uh, gotta have a good clean beer because this man also has a nice. Ah, sorry, I had to do that. Fucking bugging me. Anyway, I'm gonna bring him in. And we'll get chatting for some more metal. Uh, yeah. Sure. Hey, there you are. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good, buddy. How are you? I just need just need your um face. <laughs> you haven't seen me yet, huh? Not Hold yet. on. How come? Um, you, you got you got to start video. Okay, ready? Start video. Here we go. There he is. All right. There you are. Uh, super. How you doing, Jake? What's I'm happening? Good man. How you How you been? I'm hanging in there, man. Trying to survive. You know, stay alive in this crazy time. You know. Yep. All trying to do the same thing, just survive, as you just said, Paul. Yeah, I just uh, I just got back from the gym. Oh, cool. And I had some lunch and hanging out, waiting for you. <laughs> cool. Oh, man, I know, yeah, I had I got up, had breakfast, and showered. That's why my hair's all damp. <laughs> all right. And uh, had to brush my beard. Hell yeah, Not man. Longer. I got one too, you know that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you've had that for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah, because last time you saw me, my beard wasn't like this. It was just more stubbly. That was in Bristol. Yeah. With an onslaught. Okay, that was a while ago, yeah, a couple of years ago, right? Um, 2013, I believe. Because mm. we just had a chat about whatever. Okay, well, eight years ago. See you again, man. Super. Yeah, super. Welcome to Jake's Metal Chat. This is episode 31. You're my, well, 31st guest. All righty. So I'm an old motherfucker. 31st, huh? <laughs> Super. Super. Excellent. No problem. Yes. Well, because I've had, who have I on here? Like, in terms of legendary status in the death metal scene, and metal scene in general, I've had David Gregor from Mortis Gold. Awesome. Uh, John McIntyre of Incantation. You, you, you're going to know all those guys anyway, because you've got to, Talk with them or hang out with them at one point or another. Yeah, some of these guys, sure, exactly. Yeah. Super. Chris, Chris Rifo from Autopsy, I had him on. Excellent, yeah, he's a cool Cam guy. Lee. Cam Lee, cool guy, also. That's so still him, my longest uh, couple years ago, yo. Yeah. Cam, still, yeah, saw him in still, Germany a couple of years back. Yeah. Yeah, well, we don't, because obviously you don't live where you were born, which we'll get into. But before we get into that, <laughs> This man doesn't need any introduction, but for anyone who's getting into the metal scene or into death metal and just extreme metal in general, this is Paul Speckman. Hello. He is the mastermind behind, well, master, abomination, funeral bitch, yeah. what a name, and death strike, mm -hmm. and countless other bands if he's got any more under his belt. <laughs> yeah, I try to stay busy, you know that. Yep, always staying busy releasing albums from, well, mainly Master, but. Well, you know, it's like just uh, just before you, you got in touch with me, I was listening to uh, the first rough mix of one song from the latest uh, Johansson Speckman uh, record coming out. Oh, yeah. It's called uh, Beneath the Bleeding Sky. I was just listening to the first rough mix. They gotta do a couple fixes on the vocals. They're not loud enough. <laughs> but anyway, they gotta be loud. <laughs> yeah, they gotta be a little bit louder in a couple spots. So I'll wait for the next mix. I just spoke with Roger just before we got online here. 
Yeah, which is fine. You know, I'm happy. We got a brand new album. Uh, like I said, Beneath the Bleeding Sky. I'm not sure when it's coming out. It'll be coming out on Transcending Obscurity. I don't have a release date yet. Great, but great label. Just, yeah, I just finished the vocals uh, actually last week. So now uh, in Norway, they're doing some mixing and they'll be sending me each song and I'll be complaining and telling them what I like or don't like about it until we get it right. But but this rough mix, you know, I just heard, like I said a little while ago, it sounds great. It's going to be a good record for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, Roger is a fantastic musician. I've heard a lot of his stuff over his stuff under his own name or revolting or the grotesquery and he's a great musician for sure great, great songwriter excellent songwriter you know for sure yeah def definitely and hope to see more from him with well with you or on his own yeah well this will be the sixth uh sixth recording together six albums so that's cool oh forward to that yeah that's quite an accomplishment i have to say yeah well you know when, when something's good uh you got to keep doing it, you know. Just keep doing I, it. I, I like what he writes, so we keep doing it, you know, whatever. That's fine. Yeah, I got the new Revolting album that he released last year. Re Revolting, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, what am I saying? <laughs> Heard it. Heard it. Yeah. It, was, it was just just my right level of death metal, that, you know, the Swedish style of death metal and just old school yeah. sounding. My sort mm -hmm. of thing. I'm going to get this one out of the way because... Obviously, it's affecting everyone around the world. When the pandemic hit, how were you coping when it first hit? Like, what what was your mindset? Well, when it first hit, actually, I was uh, I was on my way to Mexico. I guess we we did some shows in Mexico and in uh, Central America. And what really, when I really knew it hit is when we got to, uh, I believe it was El Salvador probably. And we got off the airplane and uh, we're walking, uh, you know, through customs security. There weren't, weren't a lot of people. It wasn't really super busy, but it was hot in hell, you know, like maybe 35 or 40 degrees Celsius. It was hot. And I just remember a lady walking up to me and sticking that thing on my head and checking my temperature. That's the first time that ever happened to me. And that's when I really knew that, oh, wow, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and she said, oh, your, your temperature's okay, sir, you can go, you know, we went and played that show. But uh, that's when I really knew it was happening. And then uh, a few days later, when the tour was over, I got on an airplane from uh, Florida. I was flying to Vienna, and, uh, and they had you fill out this paper. And uh, it was in case somebody got the virus or whatever, they would contact you and use your name, address, phone number. I never had to fill out a paper really like that before. So it was a little bit shocking to me. I was like, what the fuck is this? And, yeah. Okay, thankfully nobody ever called me, but it was still a fucking eye opener. You, you knew things were getting goofy. And then when I got to Vienna, normally when you get to the airport in Vienna, even if it was late at night, I think I got there maybe around 1030 or something. It's usually a madhouse outside. Everyone's outside and smoking yeah. cigarettes and coming in and out and stuff. And I just remember going outside and uh, smoking a cigarette. That was probably my last cigarette. Anyway, that was a long time ago. Long time ago. Almost a year. Almost a year. But uh, I went outside. I'm puffing on a cigarette. And there's just some guy out there cleaning, cleaning, you know, cleaning guy with his orange uniform, you know, his jacket on, cleaning. He's the only guy out there and me. And I said to myself, this is fucking weird. And then yeah, my brother-in-law came and picked me up. We got in the car and drove back, you know, two hours home to check. But that's when I really realized that things were getting gonna get strange you know and then obviously the lockdown started after that everything started closing and everyone's scared and terrified and a bunch of insanity was happening and it's almost a year already yeah you know? it's mental like you just said it was only you and that guy cleaning usually when you're at airport there's loads of people either coming off a flight or getting a flight it's and weird. that's what i'm trying to say is that it was a really dandy airport you know I mean, obviously, the people who were getting off the plane with me, yeah, okay, there were some people, but I'm just saying when you got outside, it was dead, and normally you would see a madhouse there, of course, yeah, day or yeah. night in Vienna. It's a busy airport. And, and I said, oh, this is not looking good. You know? And, and I got, luckily, I got home, and maybe, uh, I remember my wife saying, maybe five days later, they started closing the borders, 
to check. All the, all the borders were closed right after that. So I got home just in time. Otherwise, I would have got stuck somewhere. And that stuck. could have been crappy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That could have been crappy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because well, obviously, like, when I knew the lockdown was going to hit, like, obviously, I heard, because I saw Testament, Exodus, and Death Angel on tour in March last year. That was yeah. the last proper gig I went to. And then finding out later through the tour that Chuck and a few other, few of the other guys got the virus, which yeah, I, I was like, oh, shit, I hope they get better. Yeah, yeah, that was a crappy time for them, for sure. Well, I, have, I did hear, hear eventually that they, they did get better, so that's good. Yeah, they got better. Yeah, I agree. But I'm just saying that was a crappy, crappy time, for sure. But they got better. You're right. They got lucky. It's super. They got lucky. I was just like, I was just thinking as well. I was like, would that be the last time I ever see him on, on a stage or in person? It's like, yeah, shit. It's, it's a weird time, man. You know, I it's not. like, I had a bunch of shows going on this year. We had to cancel everything, obviously. Well, you can't, get back here. You yeah, can't get back here. People. You can't do any shows. It's fucked up over yeah, here. They don't want people getting ill and they don't want anyone in enclosed spaces. Like, if it's, if it's a gig in an enclosed space, like a pub or a bar or a club or whatever. Because you're all in that one space for however long. Unless you're a smoker, you go outside. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so how is it affecting you? I'm not changing that. Changing that, but how is it affecting you there? Um, well, for a while, it was messing with me because I couldn't meet up with anybody. I couldn't meet up with any mates. I couldn't go to my favourite pub, The Griffin, here in Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. Um, couldn't get any gigs. Couldn't see my girlfriend for a while. Yeah. Um, can't do that at the moment. We're in a second lockdown. We're in this. We got a fit. We got like a tier system. So tier one, you can go out. Tier two, you can still go out. We got to get your distance. Tier three, you got to, can only meet up with a certain amount of people. Tier four, you can still do that. But mm -hmm. I mean, if you're all in the same tier, I don't think you can meet up. And yeah. Probably, yeah. I'm probably just. So it's more, so the lockdown over there is way more serious, you know? It's way more serious because we, we did it too late. You can still move around, you know? Here you can still move around and do stuff. You, you can uh, you can go to the grocery store, you can go to the post office, oh, we can still do that. some things, the hospital, you can do some things, you know? Yeah, we can still do that, go to the shops and stuff, but you got to wear a mask is, before you go in, you got to put a mask Same on. Here, you got to wear a mask. I hate it. It's horrible. Can't breathe. It sucks. Well, I got um, one of these fucking things here. Uh, that were um, a snood. My dad got it when he was at work. Yeah, yeah, I got a bunch of these. Yeah, I these are, I put on my head and put my hair in yeah, it. Pull it down. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I put it down and then I got instead of wearing a mask, I got in my drawer. Which yeah. I'm not going to bother to find that this moment, but it's a blood stop. No, it's not important, it, but it still sucks though. I hate it, yeah. But well, what yeah, are you going to do? You know, I'm just I'm hoping it's going to go away one day. I don't know. Yeah, my mouth just get around my mouth and beard just gets a bit sweaty and yeah moist <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the, yeah. well, but, let's, let's just hope it goes away someday oh uh, it's like i'm frustrated for sure it's depressing i want to get out and play some concerts yeah that's what i want to want to see more i want to see bands playing again i want to see yeah, master but, again I'm sure, everybody, I'm sure everybody's going through the same thing right now there yeah, they got to be miserable. You know? Everybody's working at home. Working at home. Unless Nobody hanging out with work. friends anymore. The pubs are closed. There's nothing happening anymore. It's boredom, you know? Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing. I've been I've been playing my bass a lot more than I have in years. I'm practicing like, you know, an hour or something every day. Oh, that's awesome. So you know, I'm just playing, you know, sitting down playing, doing scales and stuff and just free jamming. But whatever the point is, it's... I'm ready to play a concert now. I've been jamming yeah. so much over the last seven or eight months or whatever. It's just like I'm ready to play a concert. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is, is my band is in America, you know. Yeah. The guitar so, player and the drummer are in America, and, and you can't fly anywhere, you know. No, I can't fly. I was meant to go to New Zealand back in April last year because I got relatives that live on a boat over there. And as soon as the pandemic hit, my auntie said, because that's who I was going to go with, my dad's sister, she said, yeah. oh, we better just cancel it and then wait until maybe this year or the next year to go yeah. over. Because they're asking, when are you coming over? When are you coming over? We don't fucking know yet. Yeah. <laughs> we have no idea. 
but in New Zealand they're okay, right? Yeah, they as soon as it as soon as they heard about it, locked down everything. Yeah, they were clever over there. New Zealand and Australia, big props to them for locking it down, locking the countries down straight away. They're clever over there. Everybody's clever. everybody's sick over here and not there. They're yeah, clever there, people. There's people sick here. We didn't we didn't do it until like I said March. We just thought it's not near us yet. We're fine. We should have just done it straight away. But then, what? Oh, I, I'm happy I got to see Testament in that on tour. But then again, yeah, if it hit a lot earlier, and then. Yeah. The death rate would be high, but let's get off the whole coronavirus thing because it's fucking depressing. And I have seen your bass, bass, bass guitars in the background. Oh yeah, we had another couple. <laughs> you got know. a lot more than that, I know. Yeah, they're all over the room here. <laughs> you got a lot more. Yeah, I have uh, I have eight right now. Eight. Yeah, I got eight basses, and uh, I got a new one that uh, Ragnarok uh, guitar and basses is, are making for me. Oh, nice. And uh. And uh, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> you got Finland, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking you had more. I think I was thinking you had like more eight bass. Come on, you got more than that. No. <laughs> you got like more said, than you're that. Working on, you're working on number one in, in Finland right now. Ah, awesome. And that's uh, I'm happy about that, of course. It's gonna be killer when it's done, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, that'd be cool to see because I looked on your profile and seen all the other bass. Basically, it's always custom, all custom, custom made. That's what, which yeah, is these custom ones are good, you know. They, they put their heart, they, they do good work when they do custom stuff for you. Yeah, you know? That must have cost quite a bit, I guess. Oh, you know, it's, doesn't matter. I'm doesn't happy. Matter. I, I had that uh, Brandon, Brandon guitars, they made me four of them, which was really great. Awesome. But now I have, like I said, now I have a new, new deal. I'm looking forward to that as well, you know. Yeah, and um, looking forward to seeing that bass as well, and hopefully. Yeah, that's what I mean. I hope I, get, yeah, I hope I get a chance to get out and play the damn thing. You know? Yeah, and also <laughs> see Master play live again because I've been yeah, I'll I'll saw you guys. Yeah. yeah. But, we'll uh, see. We'll see. Let's see what happens. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, my buddy today at the gym was saying that uh, so, some doctor that he knows in in uh, Denmark said that. Uh, Things should open up in March, so let's hope so. Let's hope so. I want to I see mean, friends again. I mean, next year, March, but but still, let's, let's hope, hope so. Let's hope so. Well, because I managed to meet up with some mates last year because they eased the lockdown, the first lockdown, so we can go to the pubs, but obviously you had to wear a mask and stay at your table and not chat to anybody else. You can only mm. chat to them if you go outside, which is fine. And, uh, well... I met up with some mates because um, two of my mates they, they got married last year. Mm -hmm. they, they bought a dog. They got a dog. It was what well, it's called. His my mate's wife calls it a cockapoo poo because her mum's a cockapoo mm -hmm. and her dad's a poodle. All right, so cockapoo poo. -poo. <laughs> Cock -a -poo, poo. Her name's B, and she's she, she's a she's fucking crazy, but lovely dog. Lovely dog. Tries to a lot, of, a lot of energy, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah a lot of energy. She, she's only last time I saw her, she was about six, seven months here, seven months old. Hmm. Okay, so, a lot of energy. Yeah, a lot of energy. And she's always, she was always, you know, not hard biting down on my fingers or anything, but just so because I think she's still teething and everything. So, yeah, yeah, I gotcha. So, yeah, but enough about dogs and. <laughs> Let's talk about metal. Yeah, what do you want to talk about? Well, we can talk about anything. We talk dogs. Dogs are pretty metal. Yeah, I got two little dogs. Maybe one laughs about it, but whatever. I got two, two tiny little dogs. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but dogs are welcome in the chat anytime. Yeah. We can I talk dogs, cats. Little guys. I know everyone's laughing about them. You know? I always wanted to get these like uh, pit bulls or Rottweilers or big rowdy dogs, but. My wife wouldn't have it, so instead we got two Yorkshire Terriers, two little oh, guys, cool. two brothers, you know. But whatever, they're, they're like family to me. I don't care. You know? Yeah, they're, they're your kids. Is yeah, they're problem. my kids. It's true. I don't have any kids. Those are my kids. Those are your kids. You spoiled them. <laughs> like, and I got a mate. She lives in Cardiff, Wales, mm -hmm. and um, her and her fiance have two Pomeranians. 
Okay. And they're very fluffy. Yeah, I bet. And yeah, they just look like little teddy bears. (laughs) Yeah, right, sure. I was just like, I want to, I want to hug these two so much. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, let's get let's get some metal. Let's get some metal and maybe some right, no other problem. stuff as well. Yeah. And there's another question I ask people: Where did your music journey begin, and how did it get into metal? Oh, my music journey began. Oh man, a hundred years ago, probably. Hundred years ago. I'm old, I'm old yeah, but. Oh, in the early, uh, let me think about it here. In the, in the late 70s, yeah? 1979, okay. I was a freshman in, uh, in high school. And my brother at that time, my older brother, John, he had some records in his bedroom. He had like uh, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Uh, he had Aerosmith uh, Draw the Line. He had some Kiss records too. I think he had like Kiss Alive or Kiss Alive too. I forget, but whatever. I, he'd be at work and stuff, and I'd be down there in his bedroom playing records on his stereo, sneaking around in there, checking out what he had, you know, listening. And I kind of started discovering that stuff. And uh, then when I got into high school, uh, there were some cats. Uh, I was walking around the singing a song from yes all, all good people from yes see no good people anyway and uh one of the guys heard me he's like oh you know he, i think it was like uh sophomore year he's like oh we got a band and stuff and the singer just got fired and we're looking for a singer you know sounds like you got a voice there and blah blah blue blue you know blah, blah. <laughs> but the point is is that i went over there and i tried out uh-huh. and they liked me and anyway the, what's happening is the guitar player would end up going uh and uh, joining that band Thrust. They're still having success now. It's a heavy metal band from Chicago. They're oh, called yeah, Thrust. Yeah. Now they're, they're like in LA now, but but they're having some success now. They have a new album out. It just came out. They're getting great reviews. But anyway, it was old heavy metal stuff, you know, but yeah. point is, is that uh, really without him, none of this would have happened. So I started singing in, the, in his band. It was called White Cross. And he named it after Speed. You know, we were drinking and smoking weed and doing speed as band white cross you know (laughs) i think i was 17 maybe at the time and uh just starting to get into it you know and uh you know and without him i think nothing would have happened you know i went and jammed with this band and and uh we did songs like from ufo and you know uh Black Sabbath, uh, Ted Nugent, you know, stuff like this. Montrose, you know, stuff like this. It was a cover band, you know, never really took off in the sense of anything professional. We were playing shows, you know, different school functions and parties and stuff. I think we probably did 10 or 10 or 12 shows before it all broke up, but it was a good start for me. Yeah. And, uh, and I was watching the bass player and, and I told myself that, you know, I wanted to play bass and, I went out and bought a bass, and I remember the neighbor, Mike, who telling me, uh, oh, you're never going to play bass, and blah, blah, blue, blue, and I practiced forever, you know, I was, I got to the point where I was practicing seven, seven or eight hours a day, you know, I was blowing off school and staying home and playing, and uh, getting in trouble with my dad, you know, so you should, you point should. Is, my point is, is that I taught myself how to play bass, and I was going to ask that. To another, and after years of playing, it, it all started taking off in different directions, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. I was going to ask you if you got lessons or you taught yourself. Uh, I taught myself. I, I went for one lesson, or, or maybe two lessons. I think I went for one lesson with this Jeff Kapchak guy. Actually, a Czech guy, but living in America, his family, you know, they'd been there for years. But anyway, uh, I went to one lesson with the guy. And he said to me, you know, if, if you want me to figure something out for you, let me know, you know. And, and uh at that time, I just discovered Iron Maiden. It was just when the first album came out and, and uh, the oh, second like album. Killers. I think. And, uh, you know, whatever. I just discovered the first two records. So it's a long time ago. I don't remember the year exactly. 79 maybe or 80, whatever. My point is, I said, uh, I got together with the guy and, and I said, okay, can you, can you figure this part out? Uh, 
on this on the song Killers. I want him to figure this part out the part out in the break. And he said, Oh yeah, no problem. And, and well, he didn't figure it out. I went to the second lesson and he said, Oh, I didn't have time. I went home. I figured it out myself. Okay. It took me five or six hours to figure out how to play that fucking part. It was so hard for a beginning bass player who I wasn't mm -hmm. that good yet, but I figured it out. And after that, I decided, well, I don't need no fucking lessons. What the fuck, what do I need a teacher for? <laughs> if I can figure it out, I can do it from now on. And I did. And I, I taught myself how to play more songs from different bands, of course. And one thing led to another. And the next thing you know, we had this band War Cry and I was playing bass. That was my first mm -hmm. band real first real band where I was playing bass in the band and we got as far as a demo and and we played a lot of shows had some good success opening for Mountain and Twisted Sister and Queensryche and you know a lot of decent shows we were like the local the local band opening all the big shows for a while which was cool yeah it's cool got some exposure and it was my first experience with big audiences and and really uh that was a good way to learn how to play in front of people was to be jammed and front of 500 people some of your first shows and you know it's jam-packed and you're, you're learning and then, but yeah. that's how it worked for me thrust right in there you know yeah just walking out and say like okay now <laughs> that's how it was but that, but that was was a good experience for me really good way to learn how to how to approach the stage oh definitely you thrust right in there and boom you gotta learn you know really so just head on and i also looked on your facebook profile I, I looked and I, I, you could correct me if I'm wrong here. I saw a picture of you with Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, that was in uh, 1981. That was the early days. <laughs> that was at the Motorhead Ozzy Osbourne show at the Aragon Ballroom. That just, was great. I just saw that. And I thought, wow, there's Paul with no beard. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a long fringe. Time ago. <laughs> yeah, there's Ozzy that was Osbourne. <laughs> Yeah, I had a shag haircut. Ozzy had the same. He had a shag too. It was called a shag. A shag, yes, like. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was uh, Motorhead. Motorhead opened for Ozzy. Oh, and just, did. You know, and just you bring it up that one. What's interesting is that with uh, Motorhead, uh, maybe, maybe the first five rows in the theater were standing on their chairs. Everybody else was sitting down. Most of the people at the Aragon Ballroom and, and people in Chicago at that time, they didn't know Motorhead. This was really early. That was the Ace of Spades tour, and uh, also that No Sleep Till Hammersmith came out right around the same time. Both of them together, right around that same time. And what was really cool is that just th mentioning this is that uh, before Fast Eddie died, I sent him a message on Facebook talking about that show in Chicago, and he remembered it, and he actually wrote me back, and that was cool. And nice. okay, he's dead. I kept his file, still on there. His response. And another guy that surprised me and answered me too was Pete Way. Oh yeah, Pete. Yeah, when he died too, okay, you know, he was old and he had a maniac life of lots of drugs and alcohol. That's why he died. I know that. But yeah. anyway, he answered me as well, and I thought that was pretty cool. That was interesting for me in the Facebook age. You yeah. know, it's a different age, the computer age, and, and like I said, it really surprised me that. Pete Way and Fast Eddie Clark, they actually answered me. They didn't have somebody answering for them. They answered uh, me. I could, tell. I, I could tell it was really them, you know? It wasn't like some writer. Like in the past, you know, before the computer age, somebody would have sent you a letter and maybe they would have just signed it. But these guys, just, they wrote a few sentences. Not really a big, big deal, but to me, it was awesome. It was nice to get a response. I went, wow, cool, you know? Yeah, that's... That's that's awesome. Yeah, because I just, Maybe I just it sounds think, silly, but to me it was kind of cool, you know. No, no, I mean, I answer people too, but you know, I'm not as famous as fucking, you know, as these guys. But I'm just making a point that I answer people too. But it made me happy that they answered me as well. It kind of said to me that that don't be a dick, you know. When somebody asks asks you a question, if it's a reasonable question, you got to answer it because yeah. they did. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't be a dick about it. Just. I kind of learned from them in a sense, you know, I thought, wow, these guys are pretty cool. I said to myself, sometime next time somebody asks me a question, you know, I'll probably answer the guy, you know, and, and now I do. I answer people too, you know, I'm not a dick. If somebody writes me, I answer them. I try to answer all my mail, you know, I do my own stuff as well. You know? Yeah, that's the best way of doing it. Don't get someone to answer it. 
packages, you know, I go to the post office, I do everything. I do all the merchandise. When you when people are sending money to PayPal, that's me. I'm making those packages. I'm running to the, to the post office three days a week and mailing out fucking eighty packages a week sometimes, you know. But it's me. But yeah, it's not someone doing it for you. You're doing it. Oh no, man, I'm underground. I do everything hands on myself. You know? Underground's the way. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm old, but I'm still doing everything underground, you know. Yeah. This man may be old, but he's doing it all underground. And can I just yeah. point out as well? That's, the way it's to be, right? That's yeah. important, right? Yeah. Can I also point out as well? What you, you were born in 1963, was it? Yeah, 63. Uh, 57. I'm, I'm an old my dad's fifty. My dad's 57. You'll be 58 this year. He was born the same year. All right. So, and me too. So tell him I said, hey. <laughs> I will when he gets back. <laughs> all right. But he doesn't have a big, he doesn't have an awesome bed like you do. He That's shaves. Right. He shaves. No, That's okay. Some people do. You I can't don't, all look I don't, like you and me. <laughs> I don't obviously I I can't be bothered. No I like problem. it too much. Yeah, not too <laughs> but, um yeah, I just thought I'd bring the Aussie picture up because I just thought that is fucking cool. Yeah, that, that was like a special uh it was a special thing. They they had a radio station called uh, FM ninety eight the loop. And uh Ozzy uh put out his, his new record, uh, you know, the Blizzard of Oz on vinyl. And you had to go to the, uh, it was called the flip side. It was the name of the record store. It was called the flip side. You could get concert tickets there as well. Oh, cool. it was like an agency for tickets and the record store. And you had to be one of the first 98 people to get there. You had to buy Ozzy's new album. Ozzy was there. He signed the album for you. Nice. And then uh, he gave you a ticket for the crazy train. So it was really a promotion for the album. And then, uh, you know, if you're one of the lucky 98 winners or whatever, like I was, you got to go on the crazy train, which was just a, an L train. It's still running there today. It runs around the loop in Chicago. It's just a train, you know, on an electric train, whatever. It's called an L train. And uh, you got to meet Ozzy on the train. He came and, uh, and took a picture with each one of the 98 people. He put his arm around you and, you, and they took a Polaroid. Again, old school. Obviously, people aren't using Polaroids anymore. It was actually cool technology because he took the Polaroid and in one minute, you know, there it was. There you were on there with Ozzy. And what was silly, silly was, uh, you know, they were, no, there was no alcohol on the train. It was a wimpy, wimpy fucking radio promotion. They had Pepsi and, and uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken for everybody on there, too. Yeah, they had Pepsi and KFC, you know. KFC, does oh, whatever. But the point is, is that I got to meet Ozzy. You know, you got to talk to him for maybe one minute, ask him a few questions, quick photo. And then go. And then he went to the next guy, but whatever. It was still cool. It was a nice adventure, nice way to meet one of your idols. And hey, Ozzy was Ozzy. I mean, come on. Yeah, meeting. I just, no, I just thought, I just saw I thought. And then obviously when he wasn't feeling well at one point, you put, the, oh, when it was his birthday, you go, happy birthday, dad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was just teasing him because people were saying that uh, that uh, we look similar in the photo. We look like we could be brothers. So I make a joke. Yeah, so I make a, I made a joke after that. Happy birthday, Dad. I do it every year just to fuck with Ozzy. And, you know, what was cool, too, is that uh, on the Wikipedia in Poland, they have my picture with Ozzy. Oh, wow. You can find it on a computer. I mean, they could have picked anybody's picture with Ozzy. But for some reason, Wikipedia, Wikipedia Poland picked the shot with me and Ozzy. And I think that was pretty cool. Yeah, that is. That is so that's cool. the other reason why I, I smile about it, you know. I just strange I things happen, you know. It's Strange things happen in my life. I want to show you something right while you're sitting there. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I showed this on the internet. Uh, oh, yeah. The handmade knife. I showed it on the internet yesterday. Yeah, I saw the video. I the video. But, yeah, I it again. but look at the guy uh, did the video. Or, I mean, he did the. I did a video of it. And it's got my name on there, my master on there. It's handmade. It's the fucking jawbone from a deer. He made this fucking thing too, the, the case. It's just really a nice present. And what really, it almost almost brought tears to my eyes yesterday because what I didn't know about it, and the guy didn't tell me, yesterday he shared the pictures of the knife. You know, I, I shot some pictures in front of my house with the knife and different poses, you know, like I'm a killer or whatever. Some yeah. cool photos. And, uh, because he asked me to send him some photos. So I had my wife take some pictures of me outside and I sent him the photos. And then last night, um, 
he shared the post with the four photos and he said that uh he said you'd never believe it he, uh, he said uh a kid 25 years ago received a letter and an autograph and a photograph from Paul Speckman of Master. Nice. And he said, 25 years later, I made him a knife. Well, that's fucking really cool, yo. That's fucking that cool. brought tears to my eyes because that, it was so uh, it was heavy duty, right? Yeah, it's heavy well, it's duty. Really cool. So I'm trying to say it was really cool. Obviously, I didn't remember the guy. Come on, it was 25 years ago. 25 years ago. Some, so. some man wrote me and I sent him a fucking picture and an autograph and whatever and here he made me a knife he didn't tell me when he made the knife he bought an lp like last year and then he wrote me he said you know i'm a i'm a big fan of yours and he said i'm a knife maker and blah 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 i live in iceland and you know i remembered because i sent him the album to iceland or whatever that he bought and then I, he made me this knife and that was fucking really cool it just showed up last week and and really when he wrote that that little piece yesterday, I was I was almost in tears because it was just so cool that how the metal community is so knit, yeah, we're strange, and interesting, and small, and yeah, close knit of people. And yeah, I saw that video of the knife, and I just looked at it and thought, that is a fucking cool knife. Yeah, and, and I'm mean, just saying, what made it cooler to me was when I found yeah. out that. I wrote this kid 25 years ago. I don't remember, but he remembered. Because it's well, I'm so serious to the guy that he made a knife for me. And I saw on, on his page that, you know, he's selling these knives for 300 euros. They're handmade, you know? I mean, what's a nice present? It's he didn't have present. to do that. It's he didn't have to do that. And and what's really cool to the guy? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that that is no, no, it's great to hear. hear that. So Robert Wagless, I thank you very much if you see this interview over knives. It's a lovely knife, and man, what a present and what an honor and what a what a nice thing. Thank you yeah, very I'll, much. I'll sh yeah, I'll share this around and hopefully that's he'll, awesome, right? Hopefully you know, he'll see it. Really or cool. I'll send it to yeah. him. I don't know. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool I'll, guy. <laughs> yeah, def yeah, that is a cool knife. Love the handle. I love this. So I love that it's got the master logo on it, which is what I want to get onto next. Okay. Where did the name come from? And did, did did you form the band? I'm guessing you formed the band, obviously. Oh, well. Uh, or was it exactly. someone else who formed the band? Yeah, well, not, not exactly either. So it, it's kind of a, let's, let's, let's go back to the beginning now. The logo, basically, the original drummer from the band was a big fan of Batman. You can see that. The master logo yep. looks like the original Batman logo. Oh, the guy cool. even had a 1963 Batmobile-looking car that we, that I used to have to push around because he ran out of gas all the time. He never had any fucking money. I was the money guy in that band from the beginning and to the end, till now. The guy never had any money. But anyway, he had some good ideas. So what happened? He, he was playing drums in uh, that band War Cry. Yep. We did one show together, and... Uh, during the uh, song Black Sabbath, he had a disagreement because either he or the guitar player fucked it up. I really don't remember who made the mistake, but somebody made a mistake in the song Black Sabbath. And the drummer, like I said, who at the time was our new drummer, threw a stick at the guitar player and it almost started a fight and whatever. And he got kicked out of the band. Sure. Well, anyway, con uh, consequently, so he was hanging out, doing nothing, smoking his weed and doing his dope and whatever. He was a a party animal and stuff and living in his mom's basement where he eventually had to leave because she died just recently a few years ago but anyway going back so this guy uh so uh, the guitar player from from war cry at that time he had purchased this venom uh single and had welcome to hell and live like an angel die like a devil it was a seven inch as they would call it and this is the thing that changed our lives. So I started listening to the seven inch, really liking it, digging it. I was listening to Motorhead then time at the time. And uh, a lot of punk bands like GBH and the Exploited and NBC, Minor Threat, Discharge, this kind of stuff. Punk stuff it was really taking over at that time. And that's what we were listening to. And so uh, I let the drummer from, from Master, Bill Schmidt, I let him borrow the seven inch and let him check it out. And then he, he really liked it. And he said, man, we, you need to quit this war cry band. He wasn't in the band anymore. You need to quit them guys and come over to my house and let's start jamming. Let's do something more on the range of Venom or Motorhead. And that's how it all began. Okay. So he and I got together and uh, 
some other guy came over and helped him write lyrics, which I would find out, I would just find out a few years ago that he didn't even write the lyrics for the song Master of the Drummer. I was under the impression that that he wrote the song Master. Well, I would find out just recently, some years back, that uh, some other guy wrote most of the lyrics and, and he lied about it to me and stuff. And that's a strange story. Anyway, so uh, he and I got this band together that's all you could say you know he had some ideas i had some ideas he wrote some songs i wrote some songs we hung out together i was the guy with the money he never had any money i had to buy the marijuana and the cocaine and i had to feed him sometimes sometimes give his mother money so he wouldn't wouldn't uh, get kicked out of the house i was pretty much the sugar daddy in the band okay anyway so he and i like i said so we got things together and then we couldn't find a guitar player so we started auditioning people around, around Chicago trying to get somebody. And in the end, it all fell apart because we didn't find a guitar player. And uh, so he went and he, uh, he joined a band called uh, Mayhem. Now they call it Mayhem Incorporated. It's not together anymore. It's just because it's not, it's not the Mayhem in Norway or whatever. No, 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 no. Chicago band. It was called Mayhem. It was long before this, this Norwegian stuff came out. But anyway, so he went and uh, he did a demo with this band. And uh, he played drums with him. And during that time, I was pissed off at him. And so I put together a new band called Death Strike. And so what happened was is that Death Strike recorded before Master. Yeah, and I've heard that not, stuff. Not to burn the guy or anything, you know. And, and then later, he, you know, he talked a bunch of shit about me for years. Well, the reality is, is that I wrote songs for Death Strike. He wrote a couple songs for the original Master. That's true. And then in the original master, when we would get back together a year later, we recorded the master and death strike songs together as master. And Chris from uh, Chris Middlebrun, also from death strike and master, he wrote a song called reentry and destruction. He, he wrote the music. He wrote most of the lyrics. I wrote some of the lyrics. I wrote some lyrics. It's kind of like, this is how it worked. It was three musicians in the original incarnation of master. When we finally got him, when the band broke up Death Strike and we decided to put Master back together, now we had three musicians all writing songs. I wrote some songs. I wrote Pay to Die. I wrote The Truth. I wrote the lyrics for Unknown Soldier. Uh, I wrote the lyrics for Funeral Bitch. Uh, Chris wrote the guitar for Funeral Bitch. The drummer wrote the drummer and his friend wrote wrote the song Master, which I like I said, I would find out later. Uh, he wrote Pleasure of Allegiance, which is really a great song. Don't get me wrong. Uh, he wrote Terrorizer on a guitar, also a great song. But the point is, is that the guy just never, he was afraid of his own shadow. And so the band broke up and then I started uh, doing other stuff. I, I had a band called Funeral Bitch. Yep. I had a band called Abomination. Then I reformed Master. I gave him a chance again to come back, both of those guys. In 1989, we put together Master again after many years of not speaking with each other. I got a record deal. I got the guys together. We recorded and, you know, we rehearsed for like three days, recorded the album in two days and split up again the day after because the guys were still dicks. Bloody hell. I, I realized that I didn't need them anymore Fuck's sake. because I'd already done funeral bits and I'd already proved myself an abomination. And I decided I'm going to take over master and I'll just do it with new people myself. And I've been at it ever since controlling yeah. and running it, you know, um, it's, I mean, it's sad that the, the original members, you know, they never did anything with music, but it wasn't my fault. They really didn't have what it took, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I used to leave stuff at the, at the original drummer's house, you know, like uh, my dad passed away or whatever, and they were going to sell a house and stuff. And then, you know, in 84, and I left some stuff at the original drummer's house and he traded it for marijuana and, you know, <laughs> told me somebody broke in the house, but I, we find out later one of my amplifiers he traded to a guy from another band. I would find out five years later the guy said, "Oh, he traded to me for a quarter weed that amplifier. I don't have it anymore, Paul. I threw it in the garbage. It was broken or stuff like this." And so the best thing that ever happened for me was to get away from the original guy. Yeah, and you know? um, and that's why I'm still here today. He apparently yeah. he apparently lives under a bridge somewhere in Chicago. He's homeless or whatever, but this is not my fault. My my it's, it's not your fault. It's no, I, his I, fault. Like I said, I, I covered that guy's expenses for marijuana and cocaine and food and shit for years. And 
I drove around. I, I, you know, I, I did a lot for that guy and yeah. he turned around and burned me all the time and, and that's over, you know, and he, he lost, you know, it's too bad. Yeah. You're lost. You're still here. You're still continuing this plan forward. He decided people, to, you know, uh, some people from back then, they want to talk shit about it and this and that. Well, they, they don't know. They weren't there. They didn't know these guys. They didn't know the original members. All they saw was the one or two shows, which is all we played was one or maybe two shows in the, in the, in the original lineup. One or two times we played, that's it. The guys didn't want to even play shows. You know, I played thousands of shows since then, you know. And, uh, well, I don't have the first album Master did, but I got the second one. And yeah. on the seventh day, God created Master. Yeah. Which that, was, bought, that was the big success. You know? that, the, was a, that, that was a successful record. You know? Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I love the first it. Record was, I mean, the first record was also successful, don't get me wrong, but this one was a, a success for sure. Because I got this when you were on tour with Onslaught that year. Okay. It was a good time, you know. The, well, it doesn't have a book, but... Good guys, like yeah. Black and white CD, that's yeah. pretty straightforward. Yeah, that, that's, that looks like the Dementia yeah. version, you know? Yeah, Dementia. Yeah, I remember. Okay. And, uh, oh, yeah. I And there's two songs on here. I know Submerged in Sin, and there's another song on here that has John Tardy from... Obituary, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And that's I think... that's uh, Latitudinarian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that merged in sin. He's on that as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, um, he, he did that for a six pack of beer, yo. That's cool. Six cool guy. Six pack of yeah, he cool. Yeah, I had a picture of him at Bloodstock the year a year later, year after I saw you guys play. I'm jealous of him because his hair's longer than mine. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got long fucking hair. No he's grown it for years, so I I I, I can't you know? I can't fault him too much. Ah, he's a cool guy, John, for cool sure. Guy. And yeah, he was a big help. But, you know, it was nice that he came in for a six pack of beer to, to share his voice with me. That was cool. He was a good friend with Scott Burns, you know, of course. Oh, yeah, Scott Burns. Did still, it. it's, it's nice that he came in and did it, you know. Good did. Guy. did Scott Burns do this one? Yeah. Definitely did. It's not, it's not my favorite. Uh, the drum sound is not my favorite. Okay, it's kind of crappy for me. I never did really like it, the triggered sound. But the record did sell twenty five thousand copies, and people liked it, and blah blah blah. Yeah, all that. So, and I, know, I mean, Scott Burns did a lot of good records, but this one isn't my favorite. You know, some other bands he did were were better, but it's yeah, okay. But still, I love the album because it's yeah. A lot of people love the album. Twenty five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm trying to remember who else was on this album. I think one member of Cynic was in this on this as well. Yeah, Paul Masvidal. Yeah, Paul, I thought it was yeah, he did Paul. solos I on. I think there, if yeah. it was Paul, and I remember, and I remember, it's Paul. Yeah, he, he did the solos on there. Yeah, yeah. The those are good too. Yeah, he, those are good too. It's a good record. Okay. Uh, I like it. <laughs> okay. Fine. And uh, I've heard all the other stuff as well, like. I've either I heard the whole album or I've heard bits and pieces from the newer yeah, stuff and past it. Still, still, I mean, for anyone out there who who's watching this video hasn't hasn't heard of Master, check him out. Definitely check him out if you love okay. super hardcore. I would say hardcore stuff. <laughs> it's very hot. And uh, also got that T-shirt as well from that same gig. All right, cool. Got this on the back. Oh yeah, Underground Legacy, sure. I still got some of those left, about maybe ten, and nobody wants them. But it's a cool shirt. Yeah, I like I like the shirt. shirt. I haven't worn it in a while. <laughs> I was going to cut the sleeves off a bit. Good shirt, yeah. I like the print they did on the back. It was killer, sure. Yeah, I was going to cut the sleeves off of it for the summer, but I thought, nah, just keep it as it is. All <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can do with that one, just buy a new shirt with sleeves. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you talk, talked about Abomination as well. Yeah. And I, there's two vinyls, not vinyls, sorry, two vinyl here that I brought from you. Mm -hmm. What's the first album? Okay, yeah, sure. Your Bionation album, gotcha. Uh, okay. I better take them out of the sleeves because that might reflect. No problem, yeah. Uh, that's the first yeah. album, yeah. Abomination. Yeah. And uh, on the back. Yeah. I should have warned people, there's Paul without a beard. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, it's me. Look at that. Okay. 
Young, yeah. handsome guy with lots of hair then. <laughs> lots more than now, anyway. Yeah. I should have said, I must warn you, he has no beard. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Uh, those were good times for sure, yeah. Oh, no, it was also fun. It was like uh, 87, 88, I think, something like that. Yeah. Came oh, out those were good years. Should say somewhere. 91, maybe, yeah. 91. You want to say 90. Yeah, I looked earlier before he got you on 91. I, maybe that one 90 and the other one 91, I think. Yeah, something like that. Something like so that. Whatever. Those were good years, too. We had a good time. You know, it was a good band. Yeah, because you got some strange music, a lot of changes. I had a blast with that band. You know, it was a lot of hardcore stuff in there, a lot of strange time yeah. temple changes and stuff. Yeah, because you've got all that different stuff in it, you were just saying. Yeah. But it's. It's heavy, yeah, and and obviously people know it's a Paul Speckman band because obviously you're in the band, and your vocal yeah, style. And was, at that time, we were really experimenting, you know. And your vocal style as well. No, no, it was like, oh, oh, that's Paul Speckman. It's like, oh, Master or Abomination or yeah, bitch or Death. I was busy, busy for a long time for sure. You're very, very busy because you're busy with Master. Which has yeah. been around since what did what year did the band form? Was it eighty three? Well, that, that's what I mean. But I was talking about earlier. We got as far as writing songs in 83, 84, yeah. but the band didn't really record anything till eighty five. Oh, Just yeah, like that's right. That's right. And Master both recorded in eighty five. Yeah. Yeah, you did that album eighty like an album an album in eighty five if I remember correctly, but you didn't yeah, release it. It was, yeah, didn't, we didn't really get an album out with Master until 89 on Nuclear Blast. But, but we had an album's worth of material in 85 recorded. It just didn't work out, you know. It didn't, just didn't release it. It's like Morbid Angel, they did um, one in 86, but you didn't release it until 91. Yeah, exactly. Which is, okay, what do you think? All right, they could have released it then. That would have been their first album instead of Alters of Madness, but still. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Same thing, if the album would have came out and... In 85, when we recorded it, things would have been a lot different. I a lot different. You know, a lot. But it doesn't matter, you know, I'm still going. That's the point. I don't care. It doesn't matter what, doesn't matter. Because I've, I've heard some of the, the early recordings is on YouTube somewhere. And because I think, I think Submerged in Sim was recorded before this, before this album. I think there it was, was a demo. Yeah, demo. I heard the demo version. Yeah, it was a demo. Yeah, yeah. Way different. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Obviously. You know, it's, it's funny you mention it. Like, uh, when we did that demo, Scott Burns and uh, and Marcus, uh, the Nuclear Blast, they said we weren't ready to record an album. All right. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, fuck you. We're going to go and record the album anyway. anyway. <laughs> and then, and then 25,000 copies later, well, they were happy, of course, because everybody made money, you know. <laughs> Nuclear Blast was happy and Scott Burns too, yeah. So. Yeah, and well, that's what well, that's what and obviously. Yeah, everybody was happy, whatever. So they were wrong, you know. But it doesn't matter. It's okay. They were wrong. You know. <laughs> and, uh, the next Abomination album, Tragedy Strikes. Yeah, Tragedy Strikes. I produced that record. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Cool. That's why it's got a crunchy sound, and and some people think it's too polished compared to the first one, and they're right. There you go. Produced by, produced, yeah, produced by Paul Speck, but yeah, yeah, exactly. I produced that record. Called in Chicago. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's got a it's got a crunchy kind of uh, crunchy sound, crystal clear guitars and. And there you are again. Some people didn't like it, but I like this record. I think it's got some good songs in it. Actually, yeah, yeah it's obviously. It's the same guys from the last album, of course. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why they use the same picture, basically. Yeah, it's just like um, it was like the, it's the same photo shoot, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's the same photo shoot. Look at just on 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 this on this one, you you're on the just reversed, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and on this one, you're on the left. Well, that was nuclear blast, you know. But, uh, lazy, lazy bastards. <laughs> I would just use the same picture. Don't worry. Just, well, um, yeah, we'll keep the same guy in the middle. <laughs> yeah, just use the same picture, yeah. Dean and Paul around. That's okay. <laughs> Just, just do that. Yeah, they, they did back then, you know. And I like the logo as well. It's red on this, red on that side, and it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. 
and I still need to set up my vinyl player and set up yet. Yeah. But once I do, these will be getting played a lot. Yeah, okay. Well, that's cool, shit. We had a good time with it still, like I said. But yeah, uh, no, I was going to ask about how long recordings took for each band, each album, like <clears> this one. <throat> how long did this take to record? Uh, on the seventh day? Uh, just a few days is all we had for oh, that. Because wow. it was like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was like a hundred, maybe a hundred, a hundred hours an hour or something. It was expensive back then. Yeah. That's, uh, and so things were done really quickly, you know. Um, what about and that was and that was actually a big problem with on the seventh day and and also with the with the first master when it was like Scott Burns uh, remixed and remastered the first master. He forgot some solos on one of the songs, and when I called him and told him, he said it was too late. It was only about the money at that time for that guy. And then for on the seventh day, he did the mixes and the mastering and stuff without us, you know. In this day and age, you know, that was the last time that ever happened to me. Since then, over the years, I'm always there for mixing and mastering for every album. Yeah. You know, so, so if an album sounds good or if an album sounds bad, you can blame me. But the point is, is back then, on the seventh day, the, I don't like the sound of the drums. And it's because we weren't there. He did it on his own and the way he liked it. And that's why yeah. it sounds the way it does. And, and you know... The band should like it too. I don't know, in my opinion, anyway. You, you want to like it as a band, you know. You get the CD and it, we're like, the drums are horrible. The drummer was pissed, and I'm like, well, nothing we can do about it. It's too late, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, unfortunately, Nuclear Blast lost the reels over the years. I didn't contact Morris Sound early enough, and they had just sent the reels to Nuclear Blast. And then when I contacted Nuclear Blast, they were gone. Because it would have been really great to remix and remaster that album without the triggered drums, with the real drums. Because yeah. the guy was a good drummer. You, I mean, you hear him on the on the first two Abomination albums. There's no triggers on the drums. Those are natural drum sounds. Well, that's, it was him playing those drums. Yeah. So the point is, is if we if we could have found the or could find the reels, which Nuclear Blast tells me they don't know where they are, would have been great to remix and remaster it with the original drums without the triggers. The album would sound a hundred times better because he was a good drummer. Yeah, you know? because there's a lot of drummers nowadays in a lot of the brutal death metal bands on some other other bands. They use trigger drums like triggering nowadays. But back yeah. then, and not, and very, and not very many drummers. Some of the and some of the guys can't play very well live. <laughs> so, yeah, but a lot of my friends who are drummers in bands use triggers. They're great drummers anyway, even without the triggering. Yeah, I'm just saying that some, some guys, I just remember some guys, you'd hear the album and they'd be playing great on the album and then you'd go and see them live and it just and the triggers were off or there was a malfunction and it sounded like they're playing wrong. And what's that's weird? Like the old school not a big trigger guy, yo. That's why I like a lot of the old school bands because they never use triggers. They were, it's just them. Yeah, they were real drummers. But real drummers. It's just them doing it. Mm. I'm also like, I need trigger. It's like, but you know, I've had, I've, had, I've had this discussion with my drummer and uh, you know in Florida with Rustin and stuff, and he thinks triggers are okay, but he doesn't need them either. He plays great drums without triggers, but for some records, he did some records with some fellow, some friends of his, or whatever, and he used triggers and whatever, you know. Yeah. Saying that he's a good enough drummer. And, and there's other guys too that are good enough drummers, like you said, that can use them or not use them. So whatever, teach his own. Again, I'll just let it go at that, you know. Teach his own, yo. You know, I used to really rip on the triggers and blast beats and shit and that. I didn't like that either in the past, but now I don't care. I don't if you, if you, but I don't, don't care anymore. If you, if you like it and and it sounds good, it's okay then. So what? Yeah, because there's obviously there's a lot of death metal bands that do blast beats, but if we're gonna think about a band who was doing blast beats before them, I say Napalm Death. Yeah, but and also Funeral Bitch. I'm Funeral Bitch. Funeral Bitch, the same time as Napalm Death, actually. Yeah, because I, uh, I watched an interview with Napalm Death here on YouTube. But you know what's interesting is that uh, um, I remember meeting Alex uh, Wank from uh, Punch and Stench. You know, we did a tour in 1990 with and uh, with Punch and Stench and Master and Abomination too, 
and Alex was uh, using blast beats and stuff, and I was just telling him, you know, these blast beats suck. Blah, blah, blah. And I just remember I would see him like maybe 20 years later, and he would say, he said to me, "You were right." <laughs> he came to play a show in, in uh, where I live in, in Czech and where Scott at East Czech. And I just remember that, you know, I I didn't remember saying that to him, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. But he said to me, "Paul, you know, you want." this evening when they played here some years ago, he said, you know, you were blowing me shit all the time about playing that fucking blast beats. And you were right. It's so much <laughs> threw it out of And I was like, well, okay. I said, I don't care anymore. Sorry, I said, it was a long time ago. He said, but you were right. There's so much better. Blast beats are horrible, man. I don't use them anymore. But it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I know people do and, and some people like them and whatever, to each his own. I try and, right. try and get along with people these days, you know? Yeah. You can't criticize everybody about everything. No. I'm trying no. to you start to do trying to control it. myself. But you know, let live and let live or whatever they say. Yeah, let li- let live and let let live, let live, whatever the fuck. I can't remember. Something like that, yeah. Remember, yeah. But, but yeah. Back in the day, you know, I was a younger guy, I used to say a lot of fucking crazy shit. And when you get to be older or fifty seven, you'll see your your attitude changes about some things. You learn to be a little more open. As you get older, when you're when you're younger, a younger guy in your 20s and early 30s or whatever, you're maybe narrow-minded. You think you know everything. You have a little bit of success and you yeah. sell a bunch of records, and all of a sudden you know everything. Yeah, I, yeah. As you I, get older, you realize that you don't know everything. Yeah, I've been I've been like that. So I think, oh, I know everything, but then I get to I'm 29, I'm 30 this year. So, but you get my point. You'll see as you get older when you get to be in your 50s like me. You, you realize some, you know, like I, I, some guy was talking to me about in an interview like this, uh, maybe a month ago in New York, and he was talking to me about a, a video he saw, which I just had recently seen, and it was an interview from 1990 in uh, Holland or Germany, I think maybe Holland, and I just had seen the interview just prior to, to the uh, to the radio interview. And I was just embarrassed. I, I just couldn't believe some of the things I said. And that's what I said to him on the radio. He's like, I saw this interview. He said this. And I said, yeah, you know, I said, I was maybe in my early, I was in my early 20s. Then. I said, man, you, I said, you'll find out when you get older, you, you, you have a different attitude in your early 20s than you do when you're in your 50s. And I said, some of the things I said 30 years ago, I regret them. I regret it when I see it now. Oh, why did I say that? What the fuck was I talking about? But yeah. you, you, you grow up as you get older a bit more, you know? Yeah, it happens. And I was going to say about Napalm, definitely did an interview in Holland in 19, 1990. And they were like playing in front of some people for like a TV show. Yes, yeah, that's what it was, a TV show. Me yeah, too. TV, yeah. And they they asked, oh, what bands influenced you? And he said, you know, on about like a lot of the punk bands. And they mentioned Master and yeah. Massacre. Sure. Yeah. Because they were getting into the what was the early stages of death metal, basically. Yeah, and sure. Gotcha. I saw that. That was that was cool, actually. I saw that before. That's a nice one. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice that uh, Mitch and Mick Harris were respectful. You know, they also did that uh, the project they had. Oh, um, oh, what are they called? It'll come to me later. I know, I know what you want, to Mick and Mitch. Dead. You know, they're both they're both sitting at defecation. Defecation. Yeah, they're both sitting in their bedroom and there's they got master shirts on and they got the original master poster. Yeah. There were maybe a maybe a hundred of those posters. I don't know where they got them, but those were collectors for sure. Those were real posters. Yeah, they're both wearing masters. And shirt. that was actually cool on the back of that record. That was total respect. Yeah, yeah, because those were cool, those are cool guys. Mitch, Mitch Harris and Mick Harris. Harris. They're really good people. Both yeah. of them still. Yeah, Mick, I I haven't met Mick and I've met Mitch only once when Napalm Death played the Fleece here in Bristol in 2011. Yeah, got both really good people. Well. But Mick as well. He came to a show before, way back when we played in uh, the UK as well. Way back in the day, oh, in in uh, '93 or something, he came to to a show to pay his respects to me, and that was really nice. Yeah, because obviously when he was in Napalm Death from '85 to '91, because he left in '91. Yeah. Obviously, he would say Master was a big influence on Napalm Death's music, like in the late 80s. Well, they actually, they actually, uh, they actually covered the song Master on that Leaders Not Followers Part 2, which was a nice tribute. Yeah. That's cool. And, um, you know, they actually paid me for it, too. <laughs> cool. Good people. 
It's like, we'll pay good you. Good people, yeah. Yeah, we'll pay you. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, that was okay. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, because it, obviously when you hear like, what was it? Not, well, Scum was just getting to that, what would be grindcore, because they yeah. were they're punk bands. Yeah. And um, what was it now, grindcore band I can mention from America, from America. I think, well, you're from there, but now you live in the Czech Republic, which we'll get to in a minute. Repulsion. Yeah. You know Wait, Repulsion? Repulsion, sure, yeah, yeah. Horrified, that album. Yeah. Good stuff, yeah. Because I think everyone knew about Napalm there, but I think Repulsion kind of went under the radar, no one knew about them too much. But, uh, but yeah, like I was saying about Napalm there, obviously when you hear yeah. from Internet, right. alliteration and Harmony Corruption, you can tell that yeah. they're influenced by you guys and Massacre and all the other bands that came out in America and that. It's fine though, you know, whatever. They, they say that uh, influence is the greatest form of flat. Somebody said that, so whatever, it's okay. It's, all good. it's cool. It's good that they have this, you know, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great band. They, yeah, I, just thought I, men- I just thought I mentioned that because I just remember Mick and wearing a master shirt and some napalm death photo shoots. Yeah, I thought. Well, because he mentioned Master quite a lot in some interviews and other things, so I thought, yeah, that's some that's some respect there. That's like one of your influences and everything. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of great bands. A lot of great bands from the UK too. Band, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. We got a lot. A lot of great band. Benediction for sure. Benediction, um, Bolt Thrower, who ain't going anymore, obviously. But we got Memoriam. Carl's well, not new band anymore. Excellent band. Yeah, Memoriam are fucking excellent. Got to see him at Bloodstock 2016 on the Sophie stage. Sophie Lancaster stage. And then they played mm-hmm. the main stage in 2018. I'm just waiting for the new album to come out now. <laughs> I think a new album is coming out soon, isn't it? Or what? In yeah, right? March. Yeah, they're working on it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I read that now. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And then I was going to ask you about other bands you played with because you played with um, Pungent Stench. What are some of the other bands you played with? Oh, I don't know. Like who, for example? Um, trying to think. Uh, did you play with? Uh... Did you ever play with uh, Massacre? Uh, oh, but, but, well, yeah, recently, recently in America, we played that uh, that Houston Death Fest or whatever. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, Master was on one day, and, and Massacre also played uh, uh, the next day, and they were actually great. Yeah, I still haven't seen them. Okay, it was it was, it was mostly the original lineup, but. You know, but obviously they split since then. But it was a great show. I enjoyed that show. Yeah, that's, that's and I, I also, I also, I, I also saw Cam Lee uh, uh, play with Rick Ross and and uh, the bass player too in uh, Germany as well at this other festival. And they were really, they were good, but they were better in America for me. You know, it was a better show in America. But I, I got to hang out with the guys and and. Uh, I like Cam Lee and I like Rick Ross. I guess they're at odds with each other now, but yeah, I like them both. I, but I like I like both guys. You know? Yeah, I had to not try and bring Rick up too much when I had a chat with Cam. Not too much. I just thought, stick with metal, stick with this, stick with that. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Or we... yeah, I like, I'm just saying I like both of the guys. I mean, I know they got a problem with each other, but then again, you know, I wasn't there, so. I, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't like to take sides. If I, you're not you're not there, you can't take sides, you know. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. I don't know what happened, you know. And um Yeah, you just can't take sides. <laughs> obviously yeah, I and actually, about- you know, actually Roga is playing guitar on some songs on the on yeah. the massacre. And so is the guitar player from uh Memoriam, like you said too. He's also on the album. Yes, of course. Um my mate Johnny uh, Johnny Peterson's um, going to be on there as well. And so that's my point, is their jam with Cam Lee, well, you know it's going to be a good record. Yeah, be good, it's like, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure also the new massacre. Also musician, also musician, also musician. Also musician. I'm sure the new massacre is going to be a great album. They has got a lot of great players, and 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 all I could say to that is more power to them. I wish yeah, I'm best. definitely going to buy that album when it's out, and I'm just going. Yeah, to I wish Cam the best. I hope it works yeah. out for him. Of course, if Cam does watch this. We wish you all the best. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to go out and tour with him, of course. Massacre and Massacre would be a great tour. I was trying to get this going on, and it almost happened like, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, and then it was it fell apart. And it's too bad, you know. It, there was going to be a tour with, uh, with Massacre, Master, and Macabre. It was going to be a great oh, tour. Oh, I would love to apart. see that. Yeah, it was some, some snaky guy from Austria, and in the end, it never came together, you know. No, Macabre, yeah. Macabre, yeah. It was great yeah. talk and great talk, and we even got the tour dates. I just remember talking back and forth with Rick and with Cam and, you know, and with the guys in Macabre, and it all fell apart, and it was a bummer because it would have been a great tour, the three M bands, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Macabre, I saw <laughs> Bloodstock 2017. They were so good. Just made me laugh because they had so many. I know it was all about serial killers. And stuff their lyrical things but their stage presence was just was was brilliant but they also had some f funny moments there's one i can't i'm trying to remember the vocalist's name from the cop but so through lance corporate uh, death corporate yeah, death corporate death it's all through a beer over his head mm -hmm. i just threw a bit on the stage and went over his head yeah he just goes what the fuck was that <laughs> and he looks in my direction and like i don't fucking know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's, 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 it came from that way. <laughs> yeah, those guys are crazy, you know. But they're cool guys, you know. We're we're good friends, you know. I've known Macab, you know, for whatever, 30 years or something. I've gone on tour with them before as their merchandise. We've known each other for years, you know. Yeah, because they they it's been the same three guys since the band started. Yeah. And they're cool guys, they're nuts. But really cool, you know. They they were here a couple of years ago. I went out to see them. Of course, when I if they come anywhere near, I try and go see them because I've known them for thirty years or something. Yeah, I want to see them again because obviously I was when I got to check out their new their new album they brought out. Yeah, obviously they're getting a new album out. There should be a new tour, but again, we don't know when. I we just don't know when happen. yet. But yeah, let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope that will hopefully let's hope it will happen. Yeah, they're saying. I mean, I've I've seen on Facebook there's some tours coming in the fall but i just i really don't believe it happening you know i'm seeing like 30 days from some of these bands you know like the the, the guitar or the the, the bassist uh, singer you know from uh, morbid angel his new band you know this uh uh i am morbid, I am morbid david vincent yeah, I, th I think they have a tour coming up in the fall, but I just don't really know if it's going to happen. I saw a bunch of dates recently, you know, like 30 yeah. dates. But yeah, because I saw a tour is happening in, hopefully it's going to happen in Cardiff, but I don't know if it yeah, is. Yeah, I saw it, but I just really don't know if it's going to happen. It's, I don't think it is. I don't think it is, but yeah. I got a ticket primarily because Grave was on the bill. Yeah, that's fine. But I just don't know if it's going to happen. I, I'm not I'm not too sure, you know. Well, let's, let's just see what happens. Yeah, I mean, let's hope it works because I'd like to see this shit open up again one day. I'd like to get yeah, out and play. I want, I want to go back to a. I mean, I don't want to be a downer for the guys, but it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. But let's hope uh, it. Yeah, works. yeah, you can't help but go back to that saying, "Oh, yeah, it's not going, it might not happen." But then yeah. you've got to try and be hopeful. But I yeah, keep saying you know, "but" because I know there's going to be a "but" there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I was going to mention another band that you might know, Asphyx. Asphyx, great band. Yeah, Martin von Martin von Drunen. Yeah, he's a great guy. I, I've seen him several times, and you know, every few years we do a show together, so we end up hooking up. Or they or they come to check, and I'll go and see him. They're great people as well. They also covered Master, the song Master, <laughs> oh. and out two, two albums ago. But it doesn't matter. They're good people as well. They're good people. And, and that's the point is that Martin uh, Martin is just not. Shows nothing but respect, you know. Yeah, he's got a great voice as well. Yeah, he's a great singer. Great voice. And yeah. obviously, he does more vocals now. He used to play bass, obviously. Yeah, but just, he's an excellent singer. Excellent singer. He's got a great attitude and, and the killer voice, and that's true. Yeah. yeah, and of course, when he wasn't doing Asphyx for one, at one point, he was doing 
vocals for Bolt Thrower on, on some right. shows. Yeah. And I saw an interview with Bolt Thrower on YouTube. This was back in the late 90s when he would have been doing it. There was a show and I saw Von Van Drunen on vocals. I thought, oh, cool. I'm actually seeing footage now. I just always, 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 always it being, I only read it up that he did live vocals. I didn't actually see any footage until that. And how was that? Good? It was good. It only showed like maybe like 10, 15 seconds worth of that particular show, okay, wherever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I don't know okay. where it was. But well, he's a great singer, so I'm sure it was good. Anyway, great yeah. singer. I think no matter who bought for it, would get because they had cut. Obviously, Andy was the first vocalist. Mm -hmm. Carl came in and did In Battle There Is No Law and Run With Chaos and so forth. And then yeah. Van, Van Drunen came in and then they got David Ingram to come in and he did yeah. an album or two with Bolt Fur. Mm -hmm. And I met David Ingram. Very nice man. He's a great bloke as well. Yeah, sure. Very nice man. Very tall. He's, he's the kind of guy that comes to like uh, to show up at a, uh, at a concert or whatever and telling me, oh, I can't make the show tonight, but you bring me a bottle of whiskey. But this is for you. <laughs> I thought I would stop. I have to work in the morning and whatever but that's cool that's a cool guy yo i've yeah. known him for years as well yeah, yeah i just met him and i just chatted him for a bit and i remember him because i met him in sweden la not last year year before because this member mm -hmm. did two headline sets for scandinavia death fest because benediction went yeah. the headline on the friday mm -hmm. okay super and uh i'm sure that it's, it's got to be great live oh it was brilliant to see even not just see, seeing a non-swedish bands in sweden was mm -hmm. awesome but seeing the swedish bands in sweden was something else because seeing the crowd the hometown crowd reacting to them was brilliant yeah i'm okay. sure it was great super excellent super. and uh yeah david ingram said something to me in danish because he lives in denmark he's been living there for like yeah. 21 21 22 years and maybe yeah, that's, that's, years where I, that's, that's where i run into him most of the time you help he just said something to me in Danish Stop and uh, by, you say hello, like I said. he said something. I was like, what's he saying? And he said, you have no idea what I'm on about, do you? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's just, a great singer. No question about that. That's another legendary singer. Yeah, of he's course. A, yeah, he's an absolute legend. He's great. And speaking of other musicians living in other countries, because obviously he's from, he's not from Bristol. He's from Birmingham originally. You are obviously okay. from Chicago originally, but now you live in the Czech Republic. And um, what what made you move to the Czech Republic? I joined a band called Kravathor. Kravathor. Yeah. Kravathor. Yeah, I, I joined a band, a Czech band. Yeah, we, we were on tour with um, Eleven Creation Master and Kravathor and bass player singer quit the band and then in uh, 2000 they asked me if I would move to the Czech Republic and try and make a go of the band as their bass player and I did and that's why I'm still here today 20 years later whatever 21 years later almost wow I stayed you stayed and yeah. you, you don't regret it, obviously no no this is home this is your that's your new home now yeah, it's, there's no regrets, of course not. Do you miss no. Chicago at all? No, I, I and I get a chance to go and play there, you know, when we tour America sometimes, you know, so it's okay. But you know, you we'll come out, old friends and stuff. I don't miss it. I don't miss it. Why, why would why would you know? I don't miss it. It's just so such a long time ago, you know. Yeah, well, I just thought I asked if you missed where you were born and so like if there's anything specific in Chicago you miss. Like specifically, like I don't know. <laughs> oh, you maybe you missed the memories. Yeah. Really? It's like uh I don't want to go back there. Yeah, I grew up there. I miss the memories of growing up and stuff, but it's like uh Nobody, nobody from my family lives there anymore. I have a brother in uh, oh. in Florida, 
a brother in California, a brother in uh, Arizona, you know? Oh, so like, he was in California, but he moved to Arizona. So two brothers in Florida and one in uh, Arizona. So my point is, is that nobody, no family is in Chicago anymore, okay? Sure, I, I maybe there's some friends there, but, you know. You know not, not to make me go back there except to play a concert, you know to play a concert and see everybody which i do like every two years maybe you know yeah yeah i just thought i just thought i asked if there was anything that's like growing up there obviously and now you've got your brothers living in other parts of the states yeah so there's not really a whole lot to miss there all i could say it sounds strange but all i could say i miss the memories that's all you memory. know my old house and that's, stuff. Some, that's something at least you miss the memories not yeah, you miss the anything memories. specific there just the memories yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just the memory. So to clarify people, he misses the memories, not the place itself. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, uh, exactly. you've got three brothers, is it? Yeah. Who's the oldest out of everyone, if you don't mind me? My well, oldest brother is uh, John. He's 61. Uh, I'm 57. Tim is uh, 59. And Tom is like uh, 53. No, wait. Hold on. Think for a second here. Tom. Tom must be 50, right? If I'm 57. 51. Tom's 51. My youngest brother's 51. Yeah. So your oldest brother's 61. Yeah. And then your other brother's 50. My youngest one is 51. The youngest one's 51. Then yeah. you're in between that. Yeah. I'm 57. And then my other brother's 59. So I'm like this. I'm this, uh, the third of four. Third yeah. of four. Yeah. Because I spoke to another guy from Chicago, actually, Ken of Ken's Death Metal Crypt mm -hmm. on YouTube. He's still in Chicago. Okay. He's a big advocate for the death metal scene. Okay, super. Excellent. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of great bands from Chicago I was going to mention as well. Um, Cyanide. Of course. Great band. Um, great people. Yeah. Death Doom. Or it's very... Because it's, it's got... It's death metal with some doom so death doom yeah that's a great band cyanide for sure I know, yeah. um, well well master's now permanently in the czech republic <laughs> yeah but to but, chicago there were a lot of good bands from chicago back in the day for sure yeah definitely yeah definitely there's, all, there's bands from good, good scene yeah of course good scene and, uh, trouble and Zetrobe and a lot of good bands. Snow White, a lot of good oh, bands. Yeah, Snow White, yeah, they're, oh, they're great. Yeah, a lot of good bands from back in the day there for sure. Yeah, yeah they're great. It was a good scene in Chicago when I grew up. There was a lot of camaraderie, a lot of good bands. You know, we all supported each other until bands started getting signed. But in, before that, everyone was hanging out. It was yeah, cool. Just hanging out, having some beers, watching some bands. Yeah, some exactly. Going to people's houses, yeah. having a party there, wrecking the house, and oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good time back then growing up. Um, yeah, so you missed the memories, so yeah, we <laughs> thought yeah. you missed any memories. Great. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> that's the memories. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a new one. Yeah. Miss is the memories, but then you might. New language, yeah. <laughs> I miss the memories. I can't remember these memories. I, I can't, I don't, I don't remember the place. I just remember the memories. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the memories. Yeah, I'm a crazy old bastard, that's for sure. Oh, I'll join you in fucking 20, 30 years from now. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'll get there soon. Then we can be old and crazy together. Well, that's the one thing that, that I, that's important that I like to say is that uh, you got to stick with the uh, stick with your beliefs and your attitude, and yep. you got to stay metal, man. Yeah, I know some guys give up and, you know, but here I am 57. I'm living proof that you can still be metal and still survive and, and uh, still have a good life. You know? Yeah, definitely. Of you course. know, if you, you fight the good fight and keep up with your music and rock and roll, keep supporting, you can do it. Of course. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm living proof, you know. Yeah, this man is living proof. And also I mean, sometimes he's Sometimes these, these idiots talk shit to me around the world, you know, and and I always say to people, I like, I like to see what you're doing at 57 years old. Yeah, so what you fucking doing. You know, and I'm, re I, I'm retired, you know, all I do is play music yeah. and, go to the and go to the post office and the gym. That's my life, you know. 
I go to the forest, I ride my bicycle or I, I get in my car and, you know, drive where, you know, when, when the borders were open, drive wherever I want to go around Europe. It's, I have a good life. That's it. Just have a good, yeah. And this man is living proof of that. And also Cam Lee, he's, I mean, yeah, he's still into metal. I've been listening to metal since I was 11 years old. I'm 29 yeah. now. I'll be 30 in November. And you know, and where there's a will, there's a way, man. You can keep I'm doing. Still gonna listen to his music, no matter what. Yeah, it just got me out of some very. And I know some things. guys give up and quit and and change their lives or whatever, but I'm just a metal guy, and I can't give up and quit. I'm just this is all I know. This is all this is what I like, and all I know. You know, it's metal. Metal has got me out of some dark times. <laughs> you know. And that's what metal is music. it gets you out of those places. It gets you out of that negative. Well, metal is carrying me where I'm at now, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be happy if it wasn't for metal. Metal brought me to Europe. I've been here, like I told you, almost nearly 21 years. 21 years. Metal brought me here. If it wasn't for metal, I'd have some shit job in Chicago, be depressed. Who yeah, knows? Metal brought me to Europe, and 21 years later, I'm sitting here in my office talking to you. Yeah, there you go. It's fucking about metal. metal. <laughs> it's like starting with the bands and all of a sudden you're here with me. <laughs> oh yeah, we're hanging out talking metal. What can be wrong about that? There's it's nothing perfect. wrong with that. And also, can I say, I'm liking your tattoos. Well, thank you. Got, <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah, I have a couple. One, there we go. <laughs> I haven't got anything new though. I only have a couple, you know. I, I, nothing new in many years. But, yeah, the but sleeve I, is all one tattoo. Uh, I still got a lot of spaces, yo. But whatever. Yeah, elbows. Yeah, I still got a lot of places that I need to finish. But whatever. Yeah, got it's a not a thing that's on my mind, you know. But yeah, no, but yeah. once in a while, you know, we go somewhere and some girl or some guy, or professional tattoo artists, and they're like, oh, you know, I'd really like to do a tattoo on you, and to show you some stuff and oh, it's killer. And, oh, okay, let's do it. And I'll go and do a tattoo, whatever. Because you you've know? got a master tattoo on your hand. Yeah, it's, it's faded Lucky though. It's, oh, it fits it up. Used, it used to be red, you know. It used to be red, but now it's oh. black and white, you know. Because you, you uh, obviously, you put your hand in your pocket for your keys. Well, the red goes away. It wears out eventually. Yeah. I had it recolored one time and Never again. It's painful. Why the fuck would you recolor it's on your black and gray? It's, it's all good. Yeah, it's fucking. I, don't yeah, know. And I like. I like how it, like the M there and the R there, like. Yeah, really on the fingers. Down to your fingers. It really. Yeah, it looks good when you're playing. That's cool. But, uh, yeah. All right. So what else do you want to talk about, there, Mister? We're on. A, we've been talking for an hour already. All right. Well, um, I knew you. Locker, it's an hour and a half almost. I knew you. <laughs> I knew you asked this. I wasn't. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I got time. I'm fine. What time? Yeah. But, you can uh, what you want? Yeah. Um. You got new members. Obviously, you got different members in Master now. How did you meet yeah. them? Uh, the drummer from Master, uh, Rustin Gross. He lives in Florida. Um. He's been playing in the American band oh, for 10 years or something, maybe longer. Like the, the guys that I had before, the ones who quit, I, the ones who quit, who quit, yeah, who quit two years ago, they could never get to America because it was impossible to get visas. Uh, so every time I did an American tour, I used the same drummer, Rustin from Florida. And so I think our first tour together, what did he say? Was it 2008, maybe a long time. So I'm wrong. It's more than more than eight years. Yeah, That's long true. time. I think 2008 might have been our first tour together. And on that tour, I had uh, Alex from uh, Incantation. Also, uh, what's his new? What's his other band? Another big famous band, Alex Books. Oh, um, Alex Books, yo. He's famous, you know that. Anyway. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I have a brain fart, you know. I have a brain fart. I'm not. Thinking, I'm thinking. I know these guys. I know they have other bands. But what the fuck are those bands? <laughs> well, anyway, Alex was on tour with us in 2008 as well. But I'm just saying that uh, that um, uh, so I've had him for a long time. And then uh, in 2016, I think it was 2016, maybe. Yeah, 2016. The guitar player uh, uh, Pat Shea. 
he uh, he filled in for me in America on that tour, and then uh, I got both of these guys to do a tour uh, in 2018. Was it 2018 or 2019? Uh, 2019, yeah. They they joined Master officially in 2019. We did the tour, and then uh, that's how, confusing for me because we had a year off, so 2020. <laughs> <clears throat> It's gone already, yo. Yeah, well, well, basically, we were on tour to get. Okay, it's hard for me to, to get it through my head because of this year is like a blank. But uh, yeah. 2019, we toured together. Then in the spring of 2020, we did uh, this uh, Mexico and uh, Central American tour, and then the world closed. And the world just went on lockdown. So that's the problem: is the guys, like I said, are in America. It's confusing for me when I think about it because that year is missing in my mind. Yeah, we're all writing off 2020 now. Yeah, early like 20 20 years blank. So now when somebody asks me about the guys, were they in the band in 2020? Well, yeah, they were, but Did you do something in 2020? we played for like a week in Central America and Mexico, and then it split up because I haven't seen them since, you know? Mm. It'll be a year next month in March, a year since I've seen the guys. Shit. <laughs> and that's really bizarre. That is bizarre. That is so yeah, that's the problem right now is that I don't have a band, you know, and I, I don't know what's happening, you know? I, they're still officially in the band. I mean, I want them to be in the band and I'm hoping they're going to be in the band, but I don't know what's going to happen. But, and, um, if, and if it, if for some reason this idiot new president doesn't uh, let them come over here, then uh, I'll put together a new band. Of course, I'll have to put together a European band and go on tour with a European band. I have an offer for 80 shows next year. It's uh, Asia, South America, Europe, even China is an offer, you know, so I, I've got a, an opportunity to play 80 concerts next year, but it all depends if the world opens and it depends, you know, and, and I'm going to need a band. I'm hoping it's going to be the two American guys. I really, I don't want to have to train somebody else, but if I have to, I will. Yeah. yeah. It's all up in the air right now as we keep talking about it. I keep not trying all to. Up in the, um, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. Because they're really good, these they're really good musicians. I had a really good lineup this that last year. It was excellent. Yeah, that's just, 2019 was a great tour, yo. Yeah, let's just see, let's see what happens. I know it was all up in the air. Let's, let's hope, hope. But yeah, we had a great tour. Again, hope. We had a great tour in 2019 with those guys. It was a blast. We yeah. did Europe. We did America. We did you know we did uh, Mexico. We had, it was excellent. We had really some good shows that year. That's awesome. 2019. It was an excellent year. Oh, yeah. I hope we can go back to that. Seems yeah. like so long ago, but it's not so long ago. Yeah, because I, I want to see Master again. <laughs> it's only because of the numbers. 2021, it's only because of the numbers. But 2019 really wasn't that long ago, and it was a good year. So I'm hoping to have another good year live again, you know? Yeah, that'd be great, definitely. And also, I was just going to say, you mentioned Mevlet Creation earlier. Of course, we lost Brett Hoffman in 2018. He was a legend. Love that guy. I, got I, saw, I saw the guy, you know, we, we, we toured together 44 shows in 1999. And I would see him every few years at festivals or whatever. Hmm. Sometimes I would just go to, I would take a train and check and go to Brutal Assault or Obscene Extreme just to see Love and Creation and yeah, night drinking with the guys and, and, uh, you know, just to see Brad and Phil, and just, we had good times together over the years. Many good times. Yeah, that, yeah, because I got to see Mevlet Creation in 2015 here in London. Grave sure. was on, they were on tour with Grave, uh -huh. and they were playing all the classics, obviously, all the stuff on yeah. the first album and the Ten Commandments. And sure. Brad was just a fucking great singer. I miss that guy for sure. Yeah, I because I he put his fist out so people can you know give him a fist bump, and I thought. Yeah. Yep. Do it. <laughs> yeah, it was so sad when we lost him for sure. Well, I yeah. saw that my heart just went. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's like the same thing. I have a message from him on Facebook. You know, when he was dying, we were talking, and I kept it. I I didn't I didn't delete like, it. The message. Here. But you know, once in a while, I read the message, and it makes me sad. But that's just it's, the way. It's, you know. It makes you sad because he's not. Here. You know, he thought he was going to be okay on the message. I'm gonna. I told him you gotta fight this bread, and he said I'm gonna fight, and I'm gonna get through this, Paul, and blah blah blah. And two days later, he died. That's sad, yo. Yeah, I just saw it, and I just thought, 
you know. What the fuck? I okay. mean, I just talked to him and I thought, you know, and he said to me, it looks like it's going to be okay. And two days later, he died. So that was a yeah, bummer. Yeah, because he had, um, what was it, like stage four stomach yeah. cancer or something? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember what we had, but it was, stage a, four. it was stage four cancer nonetheless. Yeah. And it took it yeah. and it took him away from us. Yeah. And yeah. What I mean, us, I mean the metal scene and same with Frank from Obituary. Yeah, that was sad too. I like right. Frank too. I hung out with him many times. Yeah, we we toured together and and uh, same thing. I would I saw him years later sometimes, and it was always good to see him and talk to him as well. Yeah, he was a great person. Met too. all these different people over the years of either playing shows or just seeing them at shows, and you built yeah, this hanging connection. out and talk together, and and then they die. And you're just like, you wow. built this connection, and then when they pass away, it hurts. Yeah, it sure it does. Because you remember the good times and stuff. Remember the know? good times. Don't remember the bad times. Remember the good times. Yeah, remember the good times. And, and uh, well, there's nothing we can do. We're all going to go, you know. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. We got to fight on and do the best we can in life. Yeah, yeah. Sad you know, truth. Like, but live yeah. your life while you can. Yeah. That's good. That's, That's a good t shirt. Oh, um, on the back, live your life while you can with some oh. band. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I, was say, I was gonna show my t shirt as well. Yeah, that's a good one too. We played a show with them, I think, in Italy before. They were oh, great. Yeah, live, your, yeah the, live your life. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Great band. This is a new album from last year. Okay, super. I've got all their albums now. <laughs> yeah, fine. But yeah, like, yeah, there should be a t. Uh, you, I think there's a t shirt you just said the live your life while you can or whatever. This would be a great back to a t shirt. It'll course. be great. Live your life while you can. That's, this is true. Or live your life like it's your last. I don't know. Nah, I like live your yeah, life. Live your life while you can. Yeah. That's even no. That's better not to live your life. Like yeah, you have to. You have to make that for your t shirt for this the show or whatever you. Know? Oh my! Oh, oh, that might be a good idea. Maybe you'll make some T-shirts for the show. Somebody can do a cool logo for your, your oh, truck, and then on the back, live your life while you can. That's Sell cool. T-shirts. Yeah, that might not actually. It's not a bad idea, actually. I'll take that on board. Do it. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll buy a shirt. Also, I'll buy a shirt. Do yeah, it. Just gotta figure out. Just gotta get a logo made and find a T-shirt. Yeah, get a logo. Made. Yeah. yeah I, I see you're doing the show. You're obviously doing the show all the time. I mean, often, many well, times, 31 times. Guests, when I have guests. Okay, but I'm just saying that, you know, 31 times, it sounds like maybe you should make a t shirt. Why not? I, I, I thought about it, yeah, definitely. So, because I'm going to do that with the bands that yeah. I'm in anyway, get t shirts out and stuff, obviously. But I never thought I'd do it for sure. Jake's Metal Chat, but that's actually a good idea. So. I think I'll just have to, you know, get a good time to do a logo for Jake's Metal Chat. Yeah, live your life over. And then get the back on the back saying live your yeah, life. Yeah, sure. I think most people like... I would, perfect. Like, because i got... There's promotions here in the, in the UK. There's one called QLC Promotions. They should get T-shirts made as well because they, they've done a lot of good... Put on a lot of great gigs before lockdown happened. Okay. And they're all mates of mine in, this, in the promotion. Yeah. Here in Bristol, so big shout out to QLC. Yeah, super, excellent. And since I showed all these CDs and T-shirts and stuff, <laughs> I know we, I, I, I know we can get them from you, personally. Yeah. But can yeah. we get them anywhere else? The master stuff. Oh, you can get them on my website. Sometimes you can get them from other people. There's, I don't know. But. Is it best to get it from you? Yeah, best to get it from me. Yeah. So find Paul Speckmetal. Yeah, speckmetal.net. Because you've got some hoodies left, some t-shirts left. Some... Yeah, you see I'm sharing shit all the time. They pose. Yeah, and, you know, I'm sharing shit all the time. Yeah, that's I'm me, always yeah. sharing stuff. I'm just saying, I should just, I should, should I just buy everything he owns? <laughs> but then I'm thinking, no, I want some shorts. I want some jogging bikes. Yeah. I got all that stuff, you know, down in the basement. Yeah, I got That's my job. Because <laughs> yeah. I got a patch of this one when I got the CD. That yeah. Year. That's going on my death metal jacket because I got bought for a massacre on there. And 
Yeah. A bunch of other bands as well. Benediction, just seen it. Right. Cancer, Good autopsy. Good stuff. And, uh, All right, dude. Well, then, well then, thanks for getting a hold of me. It was yeah, I, yeah. It's on that note, thank you for joining me on Jake's Metal Chat. No problem. Uh, did you get enough information? Everything's fine or what? Yeah, got got all the information there. It's always good to learn about the early days from those who were there. Because I, I can only imagine what it was like. Yeah. I was born in the early 90s, so I missed a lot of the early death metal scene and stuff. Yeah, but at least you get a chance to chat with people about it. That's all right. That's why I had people like you, Cam, Chris Rifer, Chris Pavel, who's from Internal Bleeding. Sure. Uh, John McIntyre, David Gregor, mm -hmm. Cam, and Cam from the Growl documentary. Oh, yeah, he's a legend. Has sure. he, he interviewed you yet? No, but he will eventually. He will. He, he'll get to you eventually. He'll get to you. He bought the, he bought the sweats. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I was watching the live stream he's doing with Mark from Morgoth, and I asked, oh, I need those. He's like, just get them from Spetman. It's like, of course. <laughs> he's a legend, that guy, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I had him on Jake's Metal Chat. Growl, Growl Records did a couple of cassettes for me, too, which was great, you know. Yeah, he's he, he's good for that. And also Ken from Ken's Death Metal Grit, he's good for that as well. Yeah. Sometimes he does giveaways for, like, stuff he's got, like, duplicates of. Because yeah. I did the live stream with Cam, because he does those live streams from, like, put his phone and puts his laptop into the TV. That's what I did with him, because my TV's here. Yeah. So Perfect. I have to look like that when I'm playing a video game. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Excellent. Next hurting now. <laughs> yeah. Stop, stop. <laughs> but yeah, once again, thank you very much for coming on here. You're more than welcome to come back. I will. And uh, once I get those t-shirts made when I got the time to sort everything out, because I'm trying to sort of work and share. Yeah, remind out. me. And send me a message. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Uh, I'll send I'll send you one because you want the one who mentioned the idea. All right. All right, it. buddy. Well, have a good day, you I had a good time talking to you, yo. Yeah, I, no, I enjoyed it. Yeah, All right, so get a hold of me next time. We'll do it again, yo. Yeah, we'll do it again. We'll do a part two. I'm trying, I'm trying to do that with Cam Lee. Yeah, once we get a new album out, let's hope it happens someday, you know. That's how, yeah, when you get the new album out by like with Master or with Rogo or Yeah. Sure. Talk about the Rogo one when it comes out. Yeah. All right. Um, what's that to say? Everybody. Keep keep the right, have, a, have a good day, yo. Yeah, and keep your beard nice and luscious. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> have a good day, buddy. You too, buddy. Take Ciao. care. All right. And he's been Paul Speckman. I've been okay. Jake Metal Chat. He's gonna go on with his day. And he's frozen with his thumb up. <laughs> And well, that's going to be me signing out because I need to get on with a walk outside, even though it's fucking freezing in the UK. But solid. Have a good day, everyone, and keep the banner of metal alive.